Welcome to my video. This is a personal story that I'm sharing today about my journey with my breast implants and how I've come to the decision to have them removed. So when I first got my implants done, I was 19 years old and I'd actually won a £5,000 makeover online and I'd considered having my breasts made bigger because at that age I sort of did suffer a bit with body dysmorphia and I also could see myself in a career in modeling and I wanted to do glamour modeling and I felt as though having bigger boobs would make me more successful in that industry and also just make me happier. I think that well, I thought that having bigger boobs would make my waist look smaller and I was kind of conscious that I looked quite flat. So I felt like that would give me more shape, which I do believe it did. Um, and so I decided to have my boobs done. Um, I was fortunate, I was lucky that I won this, this money for this makeover, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to afford it. I'm lucky that I had the support with my mom and my boyfriend at the time to be with me during that procedure. And I had that done with an amazing surgeon, Rosina Ali at Spire Hospital in Norwich. My experience was really good. Um, the, the, it was really successful. My healing was fine. Everything was just as it like was described to me. Um, the first week it was a little bit sore for me to move my arms it kind of felt like I'd torn the muscles underneath my armpits so it was hard to move my arms up and down a bit um, but really by the second week I was able to do like I was able to do more things obviously not things like um, heavy lifting and obvious stuff like that but overall it was really successful and I'm I was and I still am so happy with the way that my boobs look. They look great and I often get comments when I've been around of other women about how natural they look. Um, a lot of people don't think that they're fake because I didn't or I had them done with firstly an amazing surgeon um, and secondly I never wanted them to be really big anyway. I I just wanted them to enhance what I had, which was like a full sort of C cup. Um, and I went to about a double D E, which for someone of my height and size is a, is a very, it like could be a very natural that I had these boobs, if you know what I mean. They, they weren't too big. I'm not really petite or anything like that. So um, they suited me and they do suit me really well. Um, so yeah, that was 19, that was 13 years ago. I'm nearly 33, so that was 13 years ago. And I've had them in since then. And I do not regret the decision at all. Firstly, because it was almost like I wanted to have a boob job and the world, the, you know, the universe just landed me with this five grand makeover, which ended up me having this money for, the, for them, which is just wild in itself. Um, so that it also helped me with that career that I wanted. So I wanted to go on and do glamour modeling and I became a dancer and I felt that it really improved my confidence and um, it was good for that job as well, you know? They look great and um, yeah. <sighs> so... When I look back now at the symptoms that I've had throughout my life, they have always been since I've had my implants in, but I would never of I would never have tied them together because as far as I knew when I was getting implants, I knew there was a risk having the procedure like I don't know, like like you sign the consent forms, don't you, of like what can happen. But I didn't really think of anything after that. I didn't think that um, 
I could they could potentially make me feel unwell or you know my body could reject them or anything like that because there's not enough research done to be able to prove that that is the case you know the implants they say that there's a lifetime guarantee on the implants but um they but you should get them changed after 10 years because your blood like encapsulates the implant um and they recommend you change them but they say that the life i mean this is as far as i was aware that the the implant itself has a lifetime guarantee and that it's safe so i believe my implants were silicone although i'm not 100 percent sure um I can't remember, it was just so long ago, but I know that they were ones that have been approved to be used and are safe. They were never ones that got recalled or anything like that. Um, so as far as I'm aware, what, what's inside of my body is totally approved and okay. Um, but yeah, so f as a very young child, very young child, I used to get eczema. Um, since I was born and then that went away and when I look back after I had my implants from then on really I would be in and out of my doctors and in and out of dermatology at the hospital with my eczema flare-ups again and they would be sporadic spontaneous um, flare-ups of eczema and dryness um, I've been to see dermatology for the sort of UV light treatments, for um, topical steroids, for antibiotic um, tablets, and um, just all of the methods that they use for eczema. Um, I'd also made it made changes to my diet and allergy testing. Um, and it would just come and go um, with no real explanation. I just assumed that I was stressed because obviously when you go to the doctors, they say, you know, you're stressed because this is what causes flare-ups. And I understand that that is the case, but I couldn't think of anything in my life that was making me stressed. And it was also confusing for me because I'd be like, am I stressed and I don't realize it? Do I really not know myself that well to understand when, when I'm feeling stressed or not? And it's just been like this for a long time. Anyway, in the last year, the symptoms have been very persistent. It's not been on and off. It's been constant. I don't know if you can see in this video, my eyes at the moment, I have sort of redness around my eyes. Um, this has been for a year now and I have done everything that I feel I possibly can to try and figure out what is going on so I did allergy testing again said that I had an intolerance to eggs so I took that out of my diet um I what else did I do I did um hormone tests my cortisol level tests so I did a blood test in the morning as soon as I woke up and to see what my cortisol levels were like and they came back in the normal range so I'm like, okay, I know I have an intolerance with eggs. It wasn't an allergy, it was an intolerance. Um, so I cut that out. I knew that my cortisol levels, from what I could see, were okay. Um, so then I went back to my... Actually, no, one day I woke up. And I literally couldn't see. My eyes were so dry and so itchy, so dry, that I actually couldn't physically open my eyes without, like the light hurt my eyes so much because they felt like there was no liquid in my eyes. And they still feel like that. They still feel so dry. So I ended up having to be taken to A&E. Um, I had to cancel all my clients at work and... Um, yeah, I had to have um, some eye drops and all of these ointments and creams that I've had forever given to me. Um, still not linking, but potentially 
why this is happening, still not understanding, you know. So after I saw the doctors in the hospital, dermatology, um, I didn't really get anything apart from steroids, which I started to use and I felt I felt like this is this is not good because I didn't want to start relying on them because I know how bad it can be when you withdraw from topical steroid um, creams so I decided not to use them and just bear it because I would rather bear it than than ever get um, topical steroid steroid withdrawal symptoms because it looks horrendous um, so then I decided to start looking at Chinese medicine. I went and saw a holistic Chinese medicine doctor who gave me um, different herbs, which sort of began to dampen down the effects slightly, but wasn't really clearing up. And all this time I'm noticing, like, not only has my skin have these random rashes, I'll pop a video so you can see it at potentially some of the worst stages. But I had like rashes here, like up my neck, you can see here. Um, I have rashes on my legs, um, on my nipples as well. Um, so not only did I have that, I just started to get really low and I still feel this way because I'm still in it right now so I'd feel I do feel fatigue like often when I put my child down for a nap I will always go and have a nap as well even though he's two and a half I just you know these symptoms they could be like anyone could say oh you know you've got a busy life and you've got a child that's two and a half so no wonder you're tired I've thought about all of these things but I feel like I know my body and I know my usual state of being, so this isn't normal for me. I'm a, I have got a lot of energy, I can keep going. Um, so it's not normal for me to feel fatigue, like loss of concentration. I find it really difficult to concentrate for a full day at work. So then that's causing a bit of anxiety and dread because I think I've got to concentrate. I've got really intricate work tattooing people's eyebrows, doing people's injectable treatments. So I need to be really focused. Um, also getting random headaches and dizzy spells. Um, they're all, oh, get ri I get ringing in my ears. Um, yeah, just all of these really weird, unexplained symptoms that don't really have a clear start point for me that clear start point would be stress but I look at my life and although there are some things that potentially could be seen as stressful I'm a very positive person that can really adapt to situations so I'm I don't feel like yeah I don't feel stressed mm. so after looking online, actually this all has been going on for the last year and after limiting all of these things, my diet, cortisol level stress tests, all of this, I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me? Um, and then I... I was looking online, I don't even know, I, I just began to feel like I didn't want my implants in anymore. So I just began noticing that I could feel the implants in my body, that's the only way I can really describe it. I could feel that there's something that's not mine in my body and I don't know whether it's the more I've gone deeper into my own healing journey. Um, the more I've worked through a lot of stuff, the more I became very aware of my feelings and sensations in my body and doing a lot of somatic work and really getting to know my body well. I started to feel like I can feel these things inside of my body. So I started 
having that awareness of my boobs whereas before you don't just didn't even think about it like you don't even think about I don't know the color of your eyes or color of your hair like it's just they're just part of you right um and I started to become aware of them and I remember after having my little boy I remember saying to my ex-partner like I feel like I don't want my implants anymore there wasn't really and because I love the way they look it's really weird for me to say like I just feel like I don't want them anymore it's almost like my body knows but there's this conceptual part of me that that's like you know you know they look good and I'm happy with the way I look with them in but yeah so I just started thinking oh, I don't know if I want them anymore um but then I'd leave it and then the more I was looking at my symptoms and then start things started coming up on you know how the algorithm does that thing um with people having well and I'm in this field right of like non-surgical treatments so often we follow a lot of pages that have you know with women having different procedures done and then I would see some images of like breasts um implants as I've been removed what they look like and some of them had like mold in them some of them the gel or the liquid was like not clear it was like a different color and I was like oh my god like why is that happening aren't these supposed to be safe and approved and like fit for purpose you know and then it got me thinking about my boobs again and then the more I looked into it I started seeing more about breast implant illness um which I didn't know was a thing and knowing that I have such a sensitive system anyway um it kind of no one's diagnosed me with breast implant illness and they never will because it's not recognized as a illness it's because it's a bunch and a collective of symptoms that are very broad it's not very specific but when I looked at some of these symptoms what I they are so many of them it's like uncanny how many of them that I have the random rashes the fatigue muscle and joint ache which I don't feel as much um mine are definitely more the physical symptoms and then sort of um like the fatigue um I just feel like my body's constantly inflamed it's constantly fighting itself I have constant inflammation in my sinuses um it's like my body's fighting something all the time um so I went back to my doctors recently, the other week, um, they referred me to a breast specialist because I had some issues with my nipple and they did an ultrasound on just one of the breasts, which I felt was a little lazy. I feel like potentially they should have done both breasts, but they seemed to think that, well, they said that there's nothing wrong with um, the integrity of the breast. So there's no rupture, there's no like cancer or anything like that which is really good news um so I had that checked um this issue with my nipple is still going on and it's still not cleared for a year now um and there's no real sign of it clearing up um and there's also no real sign of what's causing it um so I sold my car I got enough money from my car like I sold it on We Buy Any Car because I was like, you know, I just need this money to get these implants out because after reading everything that I've read, looking at all my symptoms, I feel like it's the only option left for me to have them out to see how I feel afterwards. Maybe nothing clears up, right? Although I just don't feel, I really feel like that's not the case. I really do feel like it's linked to my body just not being able to function properly whilst constantly fighting what ultimately is a foreign body inside of me. Um, and it feels like the right thing for me to do to get them out. And what I keep thinking is I'm not going to feel any worse. Like I'm not going to feel worse having my own natural body. And if I give myself or my body that time to heal and to have a break, then 
I will definitely know whether it was the implants or not. Um, and it's difficult because I look at other stories about this. I know there's been a few of celebrities and that that have also that have had this breast implant illness or believed to have ha have it and are fighting for it to be recognised. Um, but yeah, I just I just know, and I think as a woman, you do feel like you just know these things. Um, and I think that for me, the only option is to have them taken out. So I'll be going in the next few days. I've got my consultation and I have the surgery date booked in for in four weeks time in June. And I'm really looking forward to having them taken out. Obviously, I feel apprehensive about what my body's going to look like afterwards. But ultimately, I feel like the way I feel is so much more important now. And um, it's the last thing that I can do is to remove them, to completely detox my body. I'll potentially do a cleanse or have some lymphatic drainage massage or again, go back and see Chinese medicine uh, doctors to help work with my lymphatic system and immune system after they're taken out to um, boost that. Um, so I'm really interested um, to go on this journey and also to document it as well and see how my symptoms are afterwards and just share my own lived experience and my own personal journey with my implants and also going forward with the explantation um, and just sharing that with other people, bringing awareness um, to this topic um, and also just to, yeah, even if nothing clears up, I feel like it's really important that this information is out there. Um, but yeah, I feel very, very hopeful. And I join, I've joined to lots of different um, support groups, Facebook, and read so many interviews of different surgeons and different people that have gone through this process I've spoke to people that I know that have had explantation who have said they 100% feel better not having them in and this is they didn't even have any breast implant illness symptoms they just didn't want them anymore um and they were like yeah I felt loads better afterwards and I just feel like I want to know how it feels to just feel well again and for me, it just feels like I'm not going to know until I have them out. Like the doctors were like saying about sending me down to see autoimmune, you know, the autoimmune route. And I think, what's the point until I've had my implants out? Because if my body is fighting these, that these implants, which none of us know, none of these doctors are going to be able to tell me, then... I could have ended up or I could end up being put on autoimmune suppressants and this and that when actually if I'd have just had my implants out and my body was able to just be as it is um, without having these toxins which are the implants that create these toxins that are in our bodies then how would I you know I could end up on a different path taking immunosuppressants my whole life when actually I just needed to have that awareness that potentially it's my body and the implants, which I think potentially a lot of people don't realize could be the case. So this is what I wanted to share um, about my past experience with the implants and that I have no regrets having the implants. I had them for a purpose and a means and they really served and suited me then and also like I said they look great so it's not even that I'm unhappy with them like they look perfect but I want to feel perfect and I'll never know if I could feel that way whilst having something that ultimately shouldn't be in my body uh, out of it so this is just the next stage of a healing process for me, even if my symptoms don't clear up, but it's the healing process of coming to terms with 
what my body w does look like without them in and also facing that old body dysmorphia like that I had when I was younger because I'm going to be face to face with it again when I have these implants out and I have to get used to my new body and it will look different I've had a child since then I don't know what they're going to look like I might love them I might hate them I don't know but I think with where I'm at mentally right now I think that I will just love having them out um so yeah that is where I'm at and thank you for watching this video um I don't know what sort of person will be watching this video whether it's someone that's thinking about having implants or thinking about having implants taken out or someone that's got all of these un like these symptoms random symptoms and that are looking for some answers but I hope this video has been helpful for anybody that's watched it and I'd love to hear your feedback or your experience as well if it's similar to mine um yeah so thank you for watching and I will be posting more videos um, coming up to my explantation and also afterwards on this journey too thank you for watching